Thank you for tuning in, you guys. You all are amazing. Remember to like, share, and comment below. Also, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you click that button. Um, I just wanted to say really quickly, this video um, is really personal. It was really hard for me to make. Um, it's the first part, um, and it's about my family. Um, and this in no way is to, you know, really say that, like, I blame my family for anything. I think everything happens for a reason. My family, my dad, my aunt, my uncle, my mom, they're all amazing people. I love them to death. Um, so this is not any way me saying that, like, you know, I hate them. This is all their fault. Um, yeah, I'm not saying that. This is just me sort of explaining my childhood. <laughs> What's up, you guys? I'm, you know, back with... <laughs> that wasn't exciting. Let's try this again. What's up, you guys? Back with another video today. I'm sorry that, you know, um, I haven't been uploading as much. And I've just been traveling. Like, you've probably, maybe if you follow me on Instagram, seen my snaps or my story, I guess. Um, and just I've, I've just got back from D.C. today. So I thought, you know, upload a video. Um probably time and i've been you know getting off my abilify medicine um and like i've been manic and it's been like a roller coaster so um videos had to wait but i'm here now so it's cool um sorry that like i'm in bed <laughs> i am like i haven't slept in the past two days so i'm gonna go to bed as soon as i um finish this video anyway today I sort of just wanted to, you know, split this into two parts. So this is part one. Um, if you're coming in, you know, you're in the right place if you haven't seen it. Um, talking about, you know, how I got bipolar disorder. Now, I am not a doctor. Um, and I don't even think doctors really know 100% how people get, you know, bipolar disorder. They know it's like, you know, genetically passed down and that you know, people who have parents or, you know, grandparents or someone in their family who's had bipolar disorder, um, they see a correlation, um, a very strong correlation between, you know, being passed down, but, like, I don't think they understand exactly how, like, it actually happens. So, I don't really know, but, you know, I think I can try to shed some light on why I think, you know, my, where, where, my, where my bipolar disorder came from. So I've been doing just a lot of research um, about just bipolar disorder in general. Um, and a lot of it is saying that, you know, trauma has a lot to do with it or can have a lot to do with it. Not in the sense that, like, trauma creates bipolar disorder, but it can, like, trigger it or, like, maybe, like, you know, make it, um, on you know, happen, you know, earlier have the symptoms um, happen earlier or, you know, make it more severe. Um, <clears throat> you can do all of these different things, but I'm not sure if they actually mean, you know, like, trauma will cause, like, if you have trauma, like, your chemistry in your brain will be out of whack. I think it's, like, it will accentuate that and, like, break you down. Um, so for me, I think that might have been, I think that, like, definitely could be why, I, you know, I started having symptoms at age 19 um which i believe is quite early for people with bipolar disorder i think people typically experience it around 25 don't quote me on that i'm not 100 percent sure but i do know that like 19 is not the age um so i have basically been through whirlwinds of trauma in the past and i haven't really talked about that in a video because it's sort of um a more of a touchy subject which is kind of weird because it's like what's more touchy than like me talking about my experience with like suicide or um suicide attempt so like that's how you know how big this is for me um and how like impactful it was in my life so i'm not sure if like many of y'all know but um i live with my aunt and uncle or i grew up with my aunt and uncle um since i was four years old um and i still no, I still have a relationship with my father now, um, and I still kept in contact with him for the most part of my childhood. And my mom was still in the picture, but, you know, she was um, sick in terms of, men you know, mentally ill um, and had some other, like, actual, like, physical sicknesses, um, like pneumonia, like, really bad pneumonia and, like, 
some other things that I really don't know because I was never really told the full story. But long story short, um, I was placed in the care of my aunt and uncle. Um, so my mom wanted me to live here um, and my dad wanted me to live with him. And I did live with my dad, I believe, for, you know, after I was born, maybe until I was four, I don't really know. I like switched homes like a lot. I did live with my dad and then I lived with like my other aunt and uncle, I believe, on my dad's side, um, but not like for a year, like for just for a few months. And then I lived with like my grandmother at a period of time. So, I mean, I don't really know the full story because like there's so many different competing stories. My dad tells me one thing, my aunt tells me one thing, my mom, uh, my mom's passed now, but when she was alive, she told me one thing. So I don't really know. But I think it's safe to say that, like, I didn't have a stable, like, early development childhood in the sense that, like, I was being not tossed around. I don't think that's the word. I think um, there is early childhood development in terms of attachment is super, super important, super, super important to kids, um, especially just how you in terms of form relationships and that's obviously relationships are huge in terms of like human beings and how we interact. So without like sort of like that stability I think that again according to my therapists and according to my own like little research that probably created some sort of trauma within me um not in the sense that you know like abusive necessarily um at this point um not <laughs> sorry <laughs> that's not funny um but it wasn't abusive at this point it was just the trauma in the sense that like I didn't have like a connection I didn't have like that type of developmental relationship pattern because I was tossed around between so many different homes not like homes I didn't know they were all family but you know I was taken care of by many different caretakers at such like you know before the age of four at such a such a young age and that's very printful so I think that's a very large piece of it. but after that when I was with my aunt and uncle this is the big part is that um there was a custody battle between my dad my aunt and uncle that lasted from when I was like four years old until like I was like 14 or 13 or something. So basically my entire childhood was like masked over this custody battle between like my mom's side of the family and my dad's side of the family. And whew, I can't even tell you like how difficult and how like just as a kid that was, um, I mean, I always thought I handled it really well. Like in high school, I always thought, you know, I was I was fine with it until I started, you know, reflecting after I'd gone to like the partial hospitalization program and reflected on my behavior and all that, you know, the cognitive stuff. And I realized, you know, I looked inward and saw that some of my behaviors weren't normal. So I realized that afterwards. But at the time, you know, I thought I had dealt with it. I wasn't necessarily, yeah, I had, you know, at the, during, during fights between family members, um, I would you know, freak out, um, and, you know, cry and all of that stuff. But I never, like, you know, I've never felt like after those big fights or big fights would break out between my parents and I would be there, I never thought that, you know, I would, I carried that in high school. I never thought I carried resentment at all. Um, so it was interesting. It's just interesting, um, how I think that has, like, affected me so much that I feel like I've buried it under my subconscious because it was that painful. Um, just to, like, give you a few examples so like as a kid as like a seven and six you know year old or um, eight year old like you know just think about you know just an elementary school kid um I was literally you know my dad would say like why don't you want to come live with me um like I'm your father um which would like put 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 things of guilt on me because like it is true at the same time while I was not living with my mom my mom was up here and I felt like, I had to be with her, especially because as a kid, I knew something was kind of wrong with her, and I felt like I wanted to protect her. Um, that was a huge thing that was happening inside of me, so I felt bad for my dad, um, and I felt conflicted, sort of pulled between, like, both sides, and sometimes that became more than I could handle, not just because I was being pulled, but because I literally, you know, sometimes would be asked, who do you want to live with? Or, you know, why don't you want to live with me? Or why are you saying this? And as a kid, like, I'm just responding. I don't I don't know. I'm just, you know, trying to please everybody. I don't really know what I want um, at the end of the day. Um, and it was just, it was a lot, especially, like, at six years old. And hearing my, like, mom's side of the family just talk trash about my dad's side of the family and then vice versa. 
Um, I would say like not really like the entire family. It's mostly my aunt, um, my uncle, and my dad, my mom at the time. So like they would always you know get into it. Not really my uncle, um, but you know like it's it's complicated. Like again, so but like those are the main culprits. It's not like my mom would say something about like my distant aunt or like all my cousins on my dad's side or something like that. But it was between them because those were the people in the custody battle fighting for me, um, fighting for custody. Um, so it all it got nasty between them a lot of times. Um, I remember one time I was on the phone. I don't know why this happened or why this was like allowed to escalate but I was sitting on the phone I was at my dad's house because it was the summer um so I must have been in second grade at the time I was on the phone um with my mom and I believe my aunt was on like a three-way call and I was you know just calling to check up check up on them and for whatever reason um I believe my dad didn't jump on the call I think maybe I was coerced into letting him on the call or I don't know how my dad <laughs> got on the call but Eventually, like, you know, we're all on the call together. And as a kid, I'm sitting there and, like, all my parents are, like, yelling and, like, screaming at each other about, like, you know, how they hate each other and about, how like, how they're liars and about how, like, I need to, like, come live with one of them and how that's in the best. And then, like, so, like, all of that. Um, and I'm, like, five or six at the time and I'm just sitting there and I'm just, like, you know, like, freaking out. And I think... <laughs> that happened like a lot um that's just like one example i mean my dad has had said horrible 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 things about like my mom um my aunt uh, my aunt has said some pretty like not nice things about my dad um and it came to a point where like finally i've gotten them to like just like stop talking about each other because i can't take it anymore <laughs> now that i'm an adult i'm like i can't like i won't listen to it so either like you want me in your life or you don't. So I think we're all at a good spot where like we can move on now, but then it was not like that at all. It was, I had to constantly tell them like, you know, hey, like I don't like you talking about them that way. I don't like you talking about this side of my family that way. Um, You know, I would tell you some more of like detailed stories, but I'm kind of afraid just because like this is YouTube and some things that were said were like really bad, you guys. Um, but it that's how so that is like a really big piece in terms of like what affected me as a kid um i think it affected my relationship with my sister it affected my relationship with my brother it affected like it wasn't just i mean like it was it affected the families of both sides and you know i like my cousins and on both sides my aunts and uncles on both sides because it was just like not only was it emotionally draining um and the reason why i was in therapy at four years old and have been in therapy since four years old um not only was it emotionally draining but it was also like really really expensive which and then i look back on it like they were like i don't understand why they couldn't work it out instead of spending like hundreds of thousands of dollars on lawyers so, like that makes no sense to me but you know after like it drains you financially then like that also sort of adds on to the tension within the own within like the family unit um so i remember just like that being a big thing and me feeling even guiltier because like i'm like oh people are fighting for me and now like they're spending money on me and like now they're suffering because of me and it was like i felt like yes obviously people wanted me because they're doing all of this but at the same time i felt like a like a product i felt expendable which doesn't really make that much sense because, you know, um, like people were fighting over me, but I felt like, you know, if I just wasn't there, I, I remember telling my therapist this multiple times, like, I was just like, if I, I wish I wasn't here. And I, I, I would say this as like a 10 year old, um, like nine, eight, seven, literally. Um, and I think that like, you know, if I had said that as a teenager, people would say like, oh, you're like, that doesn't sound very, you know, that's borderline like suicidal ideation because, um, as a kid, I would tell my therapist, I wish I wasn't here or I wish like, you know, I wish they did. I wish there was no decision. Like I saw I saw my that I saw myself as the problem. I saw, you know, if I wasn't born, none of this would have ever happened. Or, you know, if like I wasn't here, none of that would have ever happened. So I literally grew up in an environment where I believed that, like, if I didn't exist, then like life would be better for everybody, which is pretty messed up.